Well, what's up guys and welcome back to Tech Planet. Today we're going to be propagating the string of turtles. Let's check it out. All right, to start off this video, we are going to need our mother plant that we're going to be taking cuttings from. This is a string of turtles right here that is pretty overgrown, and we're going to use this to take some cuttings and get some leaves so I can show you how to propagate them. All right, depending on the size of your plant, you can take some larger cuttings first that we will then cut into smaller cuttings, or if it's pretty short, you can just start taking some shorter cuttings. Remember to cut in between each leaf or node. Um, basically, each node is where the leaf is sprouting out. That is where the new growth is also going to come out, so you don't want to cut that spot. As typical for tech plant videos, I am going to be using multiple mediums, so I'm going to take a lot of small cuttings. That way I can lay it across each medium and see which one performs best. Also, a lot of times with the string of turtles, the leaves will just plop right off the vine. Have no fear, we can actually use those and you can propagate with just a leaf as well. So this is a pretty cool plant because both the leaves and the vines can produce new growth. The next step then is to find a propagation bin. Usually it should be a clear bin with a clear lid that's going to allow light inside but also keep the humidity nice and high so our plants have a chance at rooting and growing new growth. The three mediums we are going to be experimenting with today are sphagnum moss, perlite, and then just a potting soil that I use for most everything, which is pretty much just peat moss, some sphagnum moss, some actual soil, some perlite, a little bit of everything. And then once you got that all set up, you can start to lay your cuttings across the different mediums. Um, obviously, after watching this video, you might decide to choose one or the other. It is not necessary to do the three-way that I'm doing, but also it is kind of fun to do on your own. So I always encourage experimentation. So maybe you want to replicate this exact same experiment at your home. But yeah, you're just going to push them into the soil just a little bit. You don't have to bury anything. These are like a trailing climbing plant and they do well in terrarium. So they'll root into any of this really. I am going to put some bare vines in here as well. It shouldn't make too big of a difference, but we will find out as time goes on. So there's vines with leaves, there's leaves with no vines, and there's vines without leaves. So we kind of covered all our bases here. Um, I usually leave this out in the videos because I sometimes think it's obvious, but I guess it's not always super obvious. I am getting all the substrate nice and wet. It's pretty moist in there. I'm not leaving water standing in the bottom, but again, everything is nice and wet and it's really humid. And as always, we usually provide updates in the tech plant video, so it has been about 20 days. Let's open this thing up and see what kind of progress we've made. So looking from far away, I can already see little hints of growth and change. And then looking up close at all three substrates, they all seem to be performing pretty similar actually. I'm seeing new growth coming out of the vines, coming out of the leaves. There's actually roots quite everywhere. So it's reacting quite well to the propagation bin. I also noticed that the bare vine is producing new growth quite quickly it's looking pretty good while the vines with leaves and everything are either continuing their growth if they're um, end cuttings or they're rooting and starting new little growths off the cut end so it's actually growing quite well i'm even seeing some of the plain leaves that aren't attached to anything starting to put out their roots too so overall things are looking great let's put these back in the bin under the grow lights and give it some more time all right, I'm not really sure what happened, but I had let these go for a full two months before filming them again. So let's check them out. From the zoomed out perspective, you can see it looks pretty full, actually. It looks like there's been a lot of progress, a lot of growth. There's a lot of leaves, and they're actually quite large. I think everything enlarged quite a bit, actually, across all three substrates. So I don't really see any clear winner here. I think with these, they pretty much root on anything. So whatever you have on hand should work pretty good. I would even be brave enough to say you could try other substrates that I did not even feature and they'll do just fine. However, there is a slight issue. These plants have been in this thing a little bit too long in my opinion. The humidity has been too high and my basement's been a little too cold and all they've been doing is sitting there with like water sucked up and they sort of slowed in progress. So we're going to do a little side mission here. I think these are really weird looking in fact. It's almost like they have a big contact lens that's like inflated over the front of the leaves. They've really um, reacted quite weird actually. When I saw them before, when we, like before we chopped anything up, you could clearly see the leaves. But now it's almost like there's a big bubble in front of them. So obviously we had to chop it up and see what was up. And upon chopping through it, it's actually quite interesting. It almost reminds me of like an aloe vera plant. When you chop them open, you just have this like clear gooey stuff. 
However, this isn't quite gooey, but again, it is very weird. And I'm really curious what kind of like mechanism this is, if it's just a water storage mechanism or what, but it's really interesting how it sits in front of the actual leaves. I feel like this would really mess with the photosynthesis of the leaves because now the light has to get through this like thick lens almost. So I don't know if this is like a defense mechanism against too much light, too much humidity, too much water, I don't know. But either way, it's a really peculiar behavior out of these plants. Being the weird person I am, I decided I wanted to try and shave that whole lens off the leaf, and I was glad I did because it's quite interesting to see that there's this nice, like, thick, succulent leaf with this totally clear lens over it. It is just really interesting. However, if you guys do see this forming on your propagations, I'm going to go on, out on a limb here and say that it means they've been in that bin a little too long and it's time to get them out. So as I yank these cuttings out, you can see they're all pulling out substrate with them. So everything rooted really nicely. And again, they all grabbed onto their substrate. So I don't think there's any like high performer. They all did well. All the bare vines produce new growth, the vines that already had leaves produce new growth, and the leaves produce vines. So pretty much everything we put in here started growing and did fantastic. Of the three though, I think I'm going to continue the experiment with the soil and with the sphagnum moss in the pots just because we have a lot, maybe we'll see a difference. I'm not sure. So really I'm just going to pot them up in a bunch of soil underneath and just set the rooted stuff on top. The roots are much fragile here so I don't want to tear it up too much. So that's why I'm just kind of placing them on top of pots with soil hoping everything sort of roots in. I don't want to rip it out too hard and basically start the process over again. So once I got them all potted up, they kind of look like this. They don't really look like they're in the greatest shape. Again, I'm pretty sure I left these in their propagation bin a little bit too long and they kind of stagnated. There's this thing called the uh, vapor pressure deficit. It's this whole concept. I've talked about it before. You can look it up, but not. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but I think that's part of the culprit. All right, an extraordinary amount of time has actually passed. And when we look at these, they don't look like they grew that much. So I've got some tips that I learned over the last four months. Um, I don't know how well this is going to fit in with the footage, but basically I'm going to repot all these into one bigger pot and do what I learned to really improve on the growth over the next few months going forward. So basically I had these sitting like open air under some grow lights, maybe 12 inches away, and they really got cooked and dried out a lot. I found over time that these actually prefer to be in wet soil quite a bit. Like you should not let these dry out completely because it's going to cause problems with their little fragile roots and they're just not going to grow much and they're just going to kind of sit and stagnate. So kind of similar to how they didn't do well in the big bin, they also don't do very well when they dry out a lot. I've seen these grow really well in terrarium so really you want to keep that soil nice and damp and never let it dry out too much. Also I wouldn't slam these with light either like I did. So that was pretty much the problem with these. That's why you don't see a ton of progress over like, honestly, almost four months went by, maybe five months. And you can tell there's not very much growth, a sad amount of growth. So I think it's because of what I just mentioned. So at this point, it's probably been about eight months, I think, looking at the footage. And it's it doesn't look that great for eight months, honestly. So good thing I kept going with this experiment and used my own advice. I kept it nice and wet, put it in a nice... Uh, terracotta pot so that way you can at least breathe a little bit because you don't want to over rot like over water and rot this stuff but i did keep it wet for a while lessened the light and let's skip ahead one month so already after one month it's looking much better much fuller especially on the top and the color is getting much better so i'm seeing a huge improvement from just what i recommended earlier where you keep the soil nice and wet don't let it get too dry and don't give it a crap ton of light but still good light we're going to give it a little more time though and see how much more it can improve. All right, so here's footage from another month past and you can see it's already really starting to change its appearance. There's a lot of that new, more reddish growth, more purplish growth. It's really bouncing back from the really sad state that I left it in. So it's taken almost two months to get to this really good healthy state. But again, I'm keeping it much more wet. I'm watering it way more often and I'm not slamming it with light. We're going to let this sit again for a little more time and you'll see a really drastic improvement. All right, so a third month has gone by since I decided to change up how I care for these, and you can really see drastic results. There is so much new healthy growth on this thing. We've actually got some length on things. The whole pot is filled. It's spilling out over the edges, and overall just looks so much better. So, you know, even though there was a slight hiccup in the middle of this experiment, I was kind of glad because I really found out how to actually care for these. And so if I'm going to give you guys advice, 
definitely keep it damp and don't let it get super dry. It's really going to stunt your growth. And once you get this thing growing well, it takes a little bit to get it going. But once it is going, it really grows nice and strong. Well guys, that pretty much sums up this video. I hope you enjoyed the three different medium types and kind of learning that you shouldn't really let these dry out much. They are terrarium plants and they do enjoy having at least moist feet. So you'll really see them grow really well if you make sure that soil does not get bone dry like I was doing for months. And you can see clearly in the footage it really made a big difference. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, may your plants go strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.